Welcome everybody to the new newsletter that we gonna today we're gonna talk about super Tuscans. Uh, the super Tuscans wines, what, what are they first of all to start with? Are the super Tuscans by uh, definition basically uh, describes any Tuscan red wine that does not adhere to the uh, uh, traditional blending law of the region. Um, as far as in 19, in the last half of 19th century, the law was a uh, wine that comes from Tuscany is supposed to be 70% Sangiovese, 15% Canaiolo, and 15% Malvasia Bianca, a white uh, grape that is uh, of Greek origins, uh, I think. Um, back in 1940, somebody decided to make a wine in a Bulgarian region of Tuscany that doesn't comply with those. He said, you know what, I don't care, I'm just going to make my own wine. The name of that wine was Sassicaia, everybody knows it. In 1970, Piero Antinori, which it was a relative uh, of theirs, uh, he was making, his family was making wine for like 600 years and he decided to try something by himself. So in 1971, he, uh, 71, he makes a wine called Tignanello, uh, named after the vineyard he was taking the grapes, which it was uh, in 1971, believe it or not, it was 100% Sangiovese. Didn't comply with the Tuscan uh, regulations, so it didn't get the DOC or DOCG appellation, which is the Nominazione di Origine Controllata e Garantita, as everybody knows. Um, his wine proved to be an excellent wine uh, to stand out. Starting with 1972, he started to add a little Cabernet Sauvignon into the blend. So, nothing to do with Tuscany. Excellent wines. Uh, they got attention, as a matter of fact, of uh, Robert, Robert Parker's attention. He's the first one, uh, as far as I know, that called them Super Tuscans. Today we're going to taste uh, Santa Cristina um, from Tuscany 2005, and also we're going to taste the uh, Centine, uh, which is made by Banfi. Let's start with uh, Santa Cristina 2005. 90% uh, Sangiovese grape, and the remaining 10%, it's a little Merlot to make it softer. Let's see what's the deal with this one. By the way, before uh, uh, before the 19th century, before the 20th century, they used to uh, uh, they were using um, Slovakian oak. Now the Super Tuscans they in Tuscany. Now the Super Tuscans they use uh, small little French barriques. Also, they were using, I think, chestnut um, oak at the time. Let's see the color of this wine to start with. It's very clean, great color, still young wine. It has a little body into it. Let's see the nose. An infusion of tea, this, this wine. A lot of greens, a lot of bell pepper in there. By the way, you know what that tells us? Uh, it tells us that the fruit was uh, overshadowed. According to my experience, I might be wrong. Typical for the old world. Let's see how this wine tastes. Gotta tell you. The same herbal texture, I got it, enters the palate, the, the four palate, very soft, medium low tannins, I was expecting a little more tannins, in the mid palate develops a little uh, bitter acidity, triggers the saliva, again, a little bitter chocolate on the back palate, comes back with a medium alcohol. So it's a medium, but it's a nice, fun, uh, easy drinking wine. I bet you this would be a little better probably with the food. It's a food friendly wine. Um, the Merlot definitely does his job, even though it's only 10%. Uh, the Merlot softens very much this uh, Sangiovese. Let's move to the other wine, which is uh, Centine, made by Banfi. It's a blend of uh, Sangiovese, Cabernet Sauvignon, and Merlot. We don't know the percentages yet. By the way, it got 86 points to a wine spectator, this wine. Um, if you want to know a funny story about Bonfi, matter of fact, I think in February this year, 2007, 
uh, what they did, they were digging, they were trying to plant some new vines and uh, they came across a, uh, uh, believe it or not, 5 million uh, year old whale skeleton in perfect uh, stage. The archaeologists, they just closed the, <laughs> the vineyard to take that out of there. Let's see what this wine has to offer. Check the color in it, as usual. Ruby red, deep ruby red, um, inky rim, indication of a young wine, of course. Let's see the nose. Uh, a little more earthy than the first one. This one has a little more complexity. I get some black fruit in there. I, I get some, but in the back, you know, the, the, in the front, I still have the herbal, the earthiness. In the back, I get some ripe, um, I got some black cherries. Uh, a little more complex. Very impressed. By the way, both of the wines are under $10. I think it's $8, 8 to $9 each one of them. For Super Tuscan, perfect price. Some of the Super Tuscans, they really um, up in the, hundred in the hundreds of dollars price per bottle. You know what? I get some oak into this one. Definitely. The tannins just grab my gums. Uh, it has a medium plus tannin, tannins. Makes it perfect fit for red meats, uh, medium rare steak, that sort of thing. Food with high protein to balance it out. Um, in the back I have a little back uh, bitter chocolate. Also a lot of black fruit. Uh, beautiful wine. Um, Good representative, no, no wonder it got 86 points. I would have given it 88, to be honest with you. Although the, the, for for this price, it's uh, probably a perfect wine. Um, very impressed, very impressed. The Super Tuscans are something you definitely have to try. Uh, please let me know, leave your comments, and uh, let me know uh, if there's any particular wines you would like to taste uh, uh, to see me tasting, basically in the future. Thank you.